In this video, I'm going to be going over Dozzle. Now, what Dozzle is, is it is a container that you can run in Docker that allows you to view the logs in real time of other containers running on your network. Doesn't need to be running on the same host, that they can actually be running on other hosts through the use of an agent. And we're going to talk about that today. I'm going to show you what I use this for and kind of give you some ideas on how you can leverage this, especially if you're following my solo mining tutorial series. So right off the bat, if you head on over to dozzle.dev, this is their main website. And you can, they kind of give you a quick like overview of what it does. And essentially all it's doing is it's going to show you all of the hosts that you're running. So this is actually uh, one of my units. So I am running dozzle on my nas and then i have an agent deployed on this linux server we can see the cpu usage see the ram usage total number of containers running on it with the operating system i'm using the ram available or the total ram in the system total cpus in the system same thing on this system we can see we've got four cpus 32 gigs of ram uh 21 containers running on uh Docker version is 24 on this one. We're using 16 gigs of RAM, so we're using about half of our RAM. We're using 142% of the CPU. Now on the CPU side, 100% is relative to one vCPU. So because I have four vCPUs, I can take this all the way up to 400%. So that's why you're seeing a low graph at like 118%. This basically means right now I'm using uh, just over one vCPU, essentially, on the system. And then we're on the left. We've got our hosts. So as I mentioned, I'm running this on... I'm running the full instance of Dozzle on the NAS. It runs in a container. I'll show you how to set this up here in a minute. Super easy to set up. And then I have the agent deployed on this Linux server. So if I get in the NAS, I can see everything that I'm running on this. And then, uh, as an example, file station. So I've covered this on the channel before. I'm running five instances of FileStation. If I just click on one, it will show me the logs in real time. So I can quickly at a glance see, okay, these are my pending rewards. If you followed that video, I was actually using like a Docker log command to figure out what the pending rewards are. This gives you a web UI to kind of see that in real time. So we can see we've got 0.003 pending rewards on that instance. If we hop on over to this instance, we've got 0.02 pending rewards. If we head on over to the third instance, we've got almost 0.1, so we're almost at that payout threshold on this one. So I'll station four. We can see 0.01 on that one, and hop on over to five. We can see 0.0186 on that one. So a quick glance, that kind of gives you an idea of what's happening in the system uh, if you're trying to look at the logs but for something like file station we can quickly see what our pending balances are there and then i'm going to hop on over to this linux server this is the server that is basically my home mining pool server so all of the solo video solo mining videos i do uh, they're pretty much all of everything i run is on this server this linux server and so like uh, asterix is an example if we pop in there, we can see in real time how many blocks uh, each of my specific miners have found. Uh, same thing with Bugna, if I have anything solo mining there, which I don't at the moment, uh, but you would see that there. Um, Cedra, I believe I do have some stuff on Cedra at the moment. So you can see here over the past day or so, I've hit around 12 blocks there. So a quick glance, this kind of gives you an idea of if things are working, um, you know, kind of along those lines, if we head on over to RMT NOMP, I can see that the mining pool is processing shares uh, from miners. I can see the miners' addresses that are connected. So if anything's not working, if any validate things are working, this is a great utility for that. And same thing on the actual nodes themselves. So if we look at RMT NOMP, we can see Grotel coin shares are coming in. We can go over to the Grotel coin node and we can see it is generating blocks. If there were anything going on, blockchain was hung, uh, we resulted in a split chain for some reason, anything like that, we can see all that from here. 
Uh, the other cool thing you can do is you can do control F. So if I wanted to just know how frequently I was finding blocks, I can do, I believe it is block found. Uh, let's see here, uh, submitted block. Uh, here it is, block found. So if I do block found, this will actually search real time in the logs. And I can see how frequently my pool is finding blocks for each of those chains. So this is for Inanova. Obviously, I'm hitting lots of blocks here. Uh, but we can see, you know, those were about two minutes, 10 seconds apart on those ones. But this gives us an idea of how frequently we are actually hitting blocks. So at a quick glance, this gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, if you're good with the regular expressions, you can do more than just text here. You can do wildcard searches, anything like that. And so this really powerful tool that allows you to see these logs in real time. So if this is something you're interested in setting up, I'm going to walk you through how to do it. Super easy. Uh, it does run in Docker itself. So I actually have a system over here that we're going to be using. So this is another, basically a base Linux system. It has Docker on it. Uh, it is running, I believe this is running an instance of NOMP as well, uh, but there's no pool set up on it yet. Let's just do a sudo docker ps-a, enter our password. Yep, so what we're gonna do on this one is we're gonna set up the agent. And then we're going to hop on over to our NAS, and I'm going to show you how to set up the full version and have it connect to the agent. So to set up the agent, we're just going to run this command. So it's going to be sudo docker run. We're going to run detached. We're just going to name this container dozzle. You can name this anything you want. I'm actually going to rename this dozzle agent. Just so I know this is actually just the agent running. Um, restart always. We're going to do the volume mapping, and this is going to just map docker.soc. This is going to allow it to see all of the other containers running our system. I'm going to run it on port 7007. And then on the uh, the container name, it's going to be Amir20 slash Dozzle. Uh, we're going to run the latest. We're going to run agent. Now, we want to specify a host name here. If you don't specify this, which you don't have to, It'll just use the name of the system. Uh, but if you want a more meaningful name, you can kind of put anything you want here. So for me, I'm just gonna put, um, I'm gonna put pull demo. And then we're gonna hit enter. I'm gonna download the image and run it. Now we are just running the agent at this point. So now what we wanna do is we wanna hop on over to the system where we wanna run the full version that will connect to this agent. And again, if you're only running one instance, you don't need to do this agent part. Uh, I am doing this so that I can access a secondary server on the main dashboard. In order to run the full version, it's gonna the command's gonna look very similar. All it's gonna be is sudo docker run. We're gonna name it dozzle. It's gonna be detached. Same volume mapping as we did with the agent. And then our port mapping for the web UI. I'm gonna run this on 8081. If you wanna run it on a different port, you can just make sure it gets mapped to 8080 on the container. Same container image, except we're not passing in the agent perimeter this time. Instead, we're gonna be passing in this remote agent. Now, if you have multiple remote agents on your system, you don't wanna comma separate this, but what you can do is you can specify the perimeter more than once. So for us, 74 is actually the system that our pools are already running on, so we definitely want that one there. The new system that we're adding Dozzle to is gonna be 111, and we're running that on port 7007. So now if we run this, it should start up the Dozzle, basically the full instance with the web UI and everything on this system, and it should use the agents that are running on these other systems to aggregate together all the logs into one central UI. So if we hop on over and we give this a refresh, we can see we are now running. We've got the NAS on here. We've got the Linux server. And we also have this new server that we added. And you can see that the new server is actually running a newer agent version than my older one was. And that's just because I haven't updated that older agent yet. 
and we did a fresh install. And we can see there's two containers here. And remember, we gave it a host name of pool demo. So instead of showing us the server name, it actually shows us this. It gives us this little icon to let us know it's running on the agent where this is running on the actual full system. If we go in the pool demo, we can see our nomp log is right here. I don't have any pool set up. It's just a base nomp install. And then the agent, obviously we can see the agent logs as well. Um, so you, you are always going to see all the running containers here. Now, if you do want to see more than just that, you can go back to uh, Dazzle. If you just click this up here, go to settings. And these are all types of display settings you can do. If you want to include stop containers, you can toggle that on as well. That'll show you stop containers. And then you can toggle on and off timestamps. I like to leave timestamps on so that I know when that activity occurred. Uh, there are some other things you can include, which is the type of message it is. Usually I leave this off um, because they do give you like kind of these red indicators if it's an error. Um, typically it's relatively easy to identify. Uh, but if you want something that stands out more, you can definitely turn that on. Uh, and the cool thing with this, they actually give you a preview window of what everything would look like. So if you condense the logs down, they would look like that. Um, the scroll bars basically gets rid of the wider scroll bar. I actually like the wider scroll bar. Um, and then if you want to override the language, you can do that as well. So if I wanted to basically change the, the language of everything in the system, I can do that. For me, I'm going to leave on auto, which is going to be English. You can also adjust the date time format and also the fonts that you want to show. And if you want to like a light color scheme versus a dark, you can do that as well. Uh, and then if you want to disable searching, you can untoggle this and that will disable the searching as well. Uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. It's, it's very lightweight, uh, but it does give you a lot of flexibility as far as wanting to quick shot check logs without having to remote in the systems, things like that. If you're on your home network, you can kind of use this as a central dashboard for any Docker containers you're running. No matter where you're running these at, you can always deploy those agents on those systems. So if you have a Proxmox server, an Unraid server, uh, Synology, anything like that, and you just want to aggregate together all of your Docker hosts into kind of one central dashboard just for log viewing purposes, this is a great utility to use.